recording has started. Um, by participating in SAS, you agreed to the terms of engagement, which I'm posting right now in the chat. Ta-da. And we ask that you mute for clarity during the meeting and for the after play. Use the raised hand reaction to share. Um, if you want to weigh in, then also just type weigh in. That way we know it's not a change of topic. Um, we try to do a handoff in SAS. So there's a little thing that says people, like right now says people 14, and that will put people in order for you. If you don't know the order, just shout out to the mod, which is me, and I'll call out the next person. Um, and we reminder that the meeting is um, posted to our public YouTube page every week. We are into the Naked Moon for Foundations program members, which means the workbook part one for the month has been posted in the Teams. So you could check that out. We already had our one sacred space meeting uh, yesterday, the first Saturday of every month. And we'll have our, um, you can pick between two meeting times on the 7th. And that correlates with our first part of our workbook. There's some a videos, a moon focus video, and a journal prompt video up in Teams as well. And yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, as far as announcements, we had a new item in the shop called the Witch's Cache box. Um, a few questions people have been asking, like, what's the difference between the broom box and the uh, cache box? Um, and so the broom box, uh, anyone can order, you know, the broom box, anyone can order the cache box for both members and non-members. But the br new broom box is designed to support the practice in the foundations program where you do get that the spellcraft that we'll be working on. And with the cache box, it's kind of uh, intended to just support your magical practice overall. So, you know, it's most it's ingredients to kind of build up your witch's, witch's cabinet and things like that. Um, and those members of the guild um, will be um, working on different altars and different things in the program. So that can help support their practice. But either box can help support anyone's magical practice if you vibe with what's in there. Um, Kim did a little YouTube video. Um, the shop has its own, no, not a YouTube, a TikTok. Um, Kim, we do have our own TikTok for the shop if um, y'all are interested in giving that a follow. At Bright and Dark Shop. What is it, Kim? It's, uh, so it's TikTok, so it'll be at Bright and Dark Shop is the TikTok. Thank you. You're welcome. So, welcome. Jen Marie's pouring her tea. <laughs> we'll give Jen Marie a moment. And it's good to see everybody today. What do you guys think of the different background? It's really funny how this change of like scenery happened. Um, those of you that have spent any significant amount of time with me know that I have a fucking weird relationship with tech. Um, I, weird shit happens all the time. So my screen just started dying in the middle of everything. And, uh, so I ended up having to call my sister over to come and like fix things. And, and the fix was to change to a different screen. And that screen required me to change the angle. And I really like this so much better than like, it's even better on my back. So it's just one of those like real life examples of why it's just so much better to like trust the flow even if it's like an inconvenience or it's problematic in some way like man I'm glad I didn't stress out about it too much you know anyway I love it I think it's great I love that you guys can see Rufio and Stella better and they can be like more involved because they're always right like right there and um yeah, so that's fun. 
I've been super channely this morning. And so I'm a little bit uh, scattered and trying to like bring my focus back to to here. Um, so that's fun. Uh, what have you guys been up to? <laughs> Does has anyone? Okay, so if you've never come to SAS before, welcome. Uh, we don't have anyone up here. You're, I'm not just going to sit up here and like blah, 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 the whole time. This is a like open, casual conversation about magic. Uh, some would call it spirit led because there isn't any structure to it, only that we all share our perspectives and we have a like open and respectful conversation about it with the goal being for connection and camaraderie and like sometimes some validation <laughs> that we are all more connected than we can possibly imagine. And it's in spaces like this that we allow that connection to come forward that we really get to experience this really cool aspect of magic. So with that being said, I'm going to jump off the soapbox and let someone else uh, jump on. Uh, if there's anyone else, uh, if you want to like say hi or join in the conversation, just like use the raised hand uh, thingy, words are hard. Because my mind's all, all going on. Do you want to hear? But like so far what I've like, this is what I'm switching from, like not 30 minutes before I got on camera, I'm just like sitting here channeling and writing about how reality isn't as fixed as you have been made to believe. You are feeling trapped because you are. However, you are only trapped because you are still choosing to participate in the reality that is your cage uh that kind of stuff and then switching into like sass so i'm like super on fire right, i don't I'm know what you mean jemory that sounds <laughs> totally like sass mass subjects topics like the book on sass mass probably starts with that sentence that thought that channel about but i mean i could be wrong I i'm just saying though no, you're <laughs> totally right. It's just like I'm going from this like really I'm trembling inside. And so like having conversation is <sighs> kind of challenging. Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> I have a question for you. So um, my question is around like the your, the transition that you're describing. And I'm wondering like. I understand that we do have to exist with like people and things, <laughs> but like, why do you feel like you need to make a transition? Like, why not just flow into it in here? I guess like in a way, you know, it feels like you're like, you are in a vibe and that's what you're flowing with. And now you felt like, oh, it's sass and I have to stop and like switch to a different aspect. And like, is there a way to bridge it a little more so it doesn't feel so like stark? I, I'm just wondering. Yeah, go. No, this go is great it. because uh, it's incredibly aligned with what my team is kind of preparing me for too. I'm, I'm going through this personal transition uh, that is like profound, doesn't begin to describe it. Um, but it has shifted kind of the way that I navigate, um, like life in general. And I know that I'm being kind of vague. It's just really hard to put this experience to like words and, uh, what it has like compelled me to do is to make these really significant changes in how I, uh, navigate my day-to-day -day experience to the point of being very mindful of how I wake up, what I do 
to transition from that sleeping space to the 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 waking times and how I move into exposing my system to external like stimuli being like other people and and that I uh, this like super uh, this channely state that I'm talking about is something I'm like still finding that I'm a little insecure about right uh I talk about like the release of control and how powerful that is and it's true but it's fucking terrifying at the same time like it's it is so danger rushy the whole like process of it and when you're in like a channely state the control aspect like it is flowing they call it a flow for a reason there isn't this like there isn't a filter there isn't the filter of consciousness as much as being like present in the physical world right does that make sense and so being in a public space in that state what would come through in right you know what i mean like i know that what i channel is still filtered through the lens of my perspective and i know that i still have decolonization work and deconstruction work to do and so if a channeled message is still being put through a um uh, a frequency that hasn't had that distortion removed. I don't want. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's still that. What if I say something racist and I don't know because like I am, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead, Matt. Are we going to just talk about me at the SAS? Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm I'm down with whatever. Well, you you brought it up, but like it, it, I'm going to share some of like my growth experience that I think might help relate to this, and that's for anyone to take, get takeaways from. Um, so part of my development was going from like you know a normal person, not anything extreme religious. Um but very scientific upbringing and the universe one day went, oh, by the way, here's stuff that you just can't deny. Um, and so part of that transition was this very much, what is going on? My life's out of control. I'm hearing people, like I'm sending them texts and they're freaking the fuck out because like, I'm texting them what's on their computer screen or other stuff. Um, and so even I'm going like, how do I control this? Like, what do I do with this? Like, I don't, I don't even, like, I didn't even know when I was having a normal conversation and when I was reading someone. Um, and coming to terms with that. The letting go of control I found was had much more to do with, yes, letting go of control, letting the moments happen, being okay with it. But as part of my active practice, as part of like where I'm managing my practice part of my day, came down to making decisions about what kind of filtering I wanted to put up, what kind of reactions I wanted to have. Right. So I worked on that self manifesting it. What it wasn't the letting go. I found the letting go of control was, yes, like, hey, I know that me going to a sports game where there's 50,000 drunk people, it's going to drive me nuts. I, it's just way too loud. Can I handle it? Yes. But there had better be a really good reason for me to put up that much energy. So like, I, I can be sensitive to my own body. 
but I, I went through this stage where I let it go too far. And then I had to reel it back in and go, no, this is how I need to react to this. This is how I like, yes, here are my options. And here's like this, I can work on managing my inputs, but I also need to make sure I'm having a say to myself about how I'm reacting to this. Um, and what do I want to do with it? And so, and that became easier once I realized I can help people through shadow work because I can see stuff in them and and that sort and help draw that out in a safe space. Um, and learning like so instead of those things scaring me, I just I found a outlet for it, just like where I can steer some of this stuff in a good way. Um, but yeah, so that letting it's a weird balance of like that letting go of control and letting all that shit happen, letting it affect you. But also like having that yin and yang and putting terms back on myself of no, this is how I'm going to react to this, or at least this is how what I'm going to do to try. Like this is the plan, right? And it may not work the first two, three, five times, but if I keep telling myself, hey, next time this weird ass woo thing happens, I want to set the tone for, <laughs> you know, how I react to it, what happens with it. Um, even just in developing new nuances within my gifts, um, I have found, yeah, it's, you're right. It's totally letting control, letting go of control in ways and letting some scary shit happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, hopefully there was something in there that helped. So, ta-da! Thank you for sharing your experience. I really appreciate that. Uh, Maria, were you like waving? <laughs> I'm, I'm weighing in again. Um, I might have been waving. I'm putting on lotion. Uh, <laughs> um, it smells really good too. Um, so, I was thinking about like what you said about what if I say something um, racist, like the example that you gave. Um, so for somebody that like you're, you know, you're not new to shadow work, you've been doing it for a minute, you know, that you've do been doing deconstruction, you've been working on all of those things for like very long time, you know, so meaning to say like sometimes when like you're new and you're just learning about these things, I feel like that there is like a period to just kind of have that like learning bit and like explore that and kind of like delve into that. But where you're at, like in your practice where you've been doing it, um, sometimes we say like, let the monster get you. So what if you, what if you said something <laughs> like what would happen? <laughs> I know that, 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 that isn't logical. What, where, uh, that fear isn't based in logic. It is absolutely based in uh, like my fear of being seen as the bad guy or being misinterpreted misinter uh, because of like trauma of, of being misinterpreted in a like neurotypical normal <laughs> world, right? And uh, I, uh, my mere existence is usually offensive in certain like groups and what is uh I guess I probably need to give more context too like this whole journey that I've been on since March of prioritize learning <laughs> how important it is for me to prioritize my like sensory experience and to stop being so ableist about uh, how my brain is processing my lived experience because uh, I do pick up on a lot all of the time. And what I was doing was just like pushing my entire, my whole system to the point of like maximum all of the time. And so when I started to make these shifts, what's been happening is my giftings and the energetic side has been really coming on uh, in a way that I wasn't expecting. 
and it that is still new to me and some of you guys that were at the convergence saw that this different kind of deeper relationship with even the elements and everything the time that i've spent physically harmonizing uh with the trees uh has changed me in this way that i'm still uh getting accustomed to and i not having like excuse me learning to establish a relationship with my ancestors for guidance in how to navigate this is kind of scary because I haven't, I, I, who emotions, <laughs> because it's a powerful and profound thing that I am learning to understand as it's coming through and to do it in such a public, like, pl platform is still pokes at some of those places and fears of how I'm perceived, right? And not really knowing what's coming through is intimidating as well because of that like I've been weird my whole fucking life I mean I've always been the weird one but this is some like next level shit that I mean it's been such I've been having such intense like deeply profound spiritual experiences over the course of the last like five months that I've I'm seeing a neurologist just to make sure that there isn't like you know mundane before magical kind of stuff um that is the extent of what I've been like coming into and learning how to balance that um and it's funny because it's leaning to that monastic lifestyle of like, it makes sense to me. It makes complete sense to me why someone who navigates on the spiritual plane like this and is sensitive like this needs to have like a tiny box that they are responsible for and that's it. And to prioritize their being centered and aligned because, you know, this has an effect on like, your physical body it's just it's this whole experience <laughs> been on a wild ride this year like it makes sense why and and all of that but it doesn't change the fact that it's it's a lot and when my team is putting me into this i i understand why it's important for me to uh, look for ancestors or look for answers uh, in my line. Oh man, it's so hard to describe this. Um, uh, Ishkatar is in a way like if if everyone that lent their genetic code to me had a spirit, a collective spirit, that is Ishkatar. If that makes sense. It's like the collective spirit of all of the hopes and dreams of everyone that lent their genetic like code to like me that brought me into this existence. And so all of the the like giftings and the way that that their they perceived their lived experience all lives within me and i'm picking up on all of that now in a way that's just like i'm still trying to sort it all out right and it's shit like this about like reality isn't as fixed as you think it is it's like how the fuck am i supposed to talk about that shit man <laughs> So, yeah. Um, Matt, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to try and remember everything. <laughs> but you hit on, like, a bunch of stuff. And um, so in that, I don't understand, but I can relate. Um, my development, um, right Right as I made the switch into 
working with some people and and being more of a leader uh, it made me allergic like I'm on call for my car today because I've been living out of my car for a couple of weeks because of my parent like it it made me so allergic to my parents like my mom believes my dad's semi believes like that wasn't the core issue but like being around me um and having to face their stuff like yeah and i have tons of really close family and they're like hey no time for you to just deal and i'm like okay this isn't you know what i thought family was supposed to be um and yeah so a whole new kind of allergic <laughs> Um, and on the flip side, it's, I heard some notes from you that were resembling perfection, like the, you feel like you need to figure out, you deconstruct, like you, you have barriers up toward, like, I need to figure out this in order to get to the answers. Um, I'm not sure. I wonder if exploring what answers you're seeking might help get some of the clutter out of the way. Like have a really, really specific goal about which answers you're seeking. And are like, and is the answer attainable? Like I, I put the analogy I use a lot is like, hey, if you want to understand a God, you have to be a God. Like you just don't have the like humans just don't have the capacity for a true fundamental understanding. That's sort of the lens I put it in. So it's like, hey, do we want to develop relationships and get a good understanding? Yes, absolutely. But what are the reasonable limits to that? Um, and then another thing I really want to touch on is having been through losing family, friends, having to restart life, um, through going through this journey, <coughs> as I've been helping people and guiding people, I, I think I sent some comment out, like you're under a spotlight while you're trying to figure your own shit out and you don't wanna mess it up for anyone else. And I'll tell you the thing I've learned, just having people around to go to and talk to, that's the best anyone can hope for. Right, we all have super personal journeys, and we all get blasted with stuff in weird and different ways. So don't worry about being perfect for everyone else or screwing anyone else up. You're shining light, and you can't force it inside them, but you can be there for the people that are ready. There isn't a whole lot more we can do. And it's a lot, it's still a lot. So give yourself, like, it's okay to make mistakes in this or what you think are mistakes, but they're not. Like, you made the best decision out of care and love that you had the capacity to make in helping that person in that moment. And no matter how bad or good it turns out, right, throw it away. That was what they needed in their journey in their life. And you being open and there for people, like, that's what's needed. And to everyone in this group. Okay, I think that's Tada. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I know you're. I think you're driving, so I can. I'll hand it off to Ben. I don't. I don't want. I want you to be safe if you're driving. No, I'm. I'm parked. <laughs> to be clear, guys, I'm not feeling trapped at all. That was just a, a channely thing. I am truly and absolutely living my best life and I'm in a position that I can make all of these changes uh, to be able to support my system in a way that is really helpful. And I have an awesome support team. I wouldn't be able to be going through this really extreme experience if I didn't have all of these amazing people and all of these uh, supports established. 
Um, so please don't be concerned about me in that way because that's not what's going on. It's just the experience itself that is really intense, right? I'm not afraid of what's going to happen. I, I do not fear death. I don't fear pain. I don't fear suffering. That's not my experience anymore. And I'm not saying that, that I don't get startled and don't ha like have like remnants of those resistances, but that's not where like I am with this kind of stuff. Like even in the hospital the other day, like that's not something that brings like fear and stuff in me. I'm not suffering guys. I love you so much. It's the like, holy shit. I can't believe I just like got this massive download of information and what am I supposed to do with all of this kind of stuff and how do I implement this into my life now before I go talking to people about it because I'm absolutely the kind of person that I'm going to try it out on myself before I go and tell anybody else that this is a thing that is helpful right and some of that involves a lot of like practicing what I've been preaching too um, because we all give advice that we don't necessarily follow ourselves um, and I'm going back and I'm following all of that advice. And as I'm implementing those like deep changes, I, what I said was going to happen is happening to me and within me. And it's kind of scary and it's got, it's a lot. It's like seeing the, the, uh, under workings of a world that you had no idea was there, but it's. Uh, so profound and so simple at the same time. And how do you share that? That's what it is. Um, and the like being concerned about the filter with which I share that information too, right? And I, what I'm working on now is my relationship with the filter. Why do I believe that it needs to be filtered still? And if I believe that I am... Uh, aligning with my like ancestral like spirit and calling of my like line then you know why am I thinking that it needs to be filtered right and knowing that you know I'm yeah you know I come from the deep south and uh there's got there's got to be some fucking assholes all up in there somewhere right my grandma was a mean woman uh but like, I, I don't know, right? I don't know what is happening, but I know that what is happening is alignment and that can be kind of scary too, you know? Uh, when you know that, that you can no longer live life in the way that you once thought that life was supposed to be lived is some fucking wild shit. It's, it's wild, right? Again, not scared, but more like uh, in awe and at the same time, like, <laughs> hmm, I'm afraid to let go is what it is. Oh, I'm an external processor, by the way, guys. So thank you for letting me <laughs> process this. Um, but yeah, I'm afraid of letting go. Absolutely. And what that, what would, what would letting go look like? What would it look like if I just didn't put the filter on? Right. Go ahead, Maria. I have a question for you and for anyone else. Um, when you, you are interacting with um, the channeling and like your guides in that way but knowing your guides know obviously that they're giving this information to you and you're incarnated as a human at this time right and so like have you ever or anybody like explored that particular piece with your guides like hey cool thanks for the info <laughs> like okay but like can we get some guidance on how I navigate this as, you know, as a human. And like, because if we, if we're like engaging, like you said, with just that part of it, like just the channeling part of it and, 
ignoring like that we need to eat and drink water, whatever else, you know, the things that humans need rest and that we we are experiencing this time as, as humans in this experience. And um, so I was wondering about that. And the second thing that I want to say, and for those of you, I'm like a caller outer. Um, I, and you can call me out and also, um, yeah, just that, like, so my calling out for the day is <laughs> if we all don't talk about this because more people are having this experience than not. So right now it's like, you know, like Jen Marie, like you're talking about it, but I know that probably almost everybody on this call and anybody listening we're, we're, you're here at SAS Mass. So we've had experiences and whether you want to learn to engage with that more, whatever, whatever you're here for, you know, um, I, I, I suspect that you're having interactions, um, that you might have questions about or that you're engaging with more on like the channeling or the spiritual nature. If we all don't start talking about it more openly, then we're just going to keep going about this bullshit that we've been doing with the social conditioning. Like, you know, we're all like, we've all been giving, we've all know the societal rules. We all, uh, you know, I know that I'm generalizing and I don't mean to speak for anyone, but I, the general consensus is we, we're not vibing with that anymore. We, we don't align with that anymore. We, we want it to change. Um, I don't, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. People are suffering because we're trying to fit in these boxes that uh, it has been changing though. Like there, a shift is, is here. It's, it's too slow for me, but I'm impatient. But, <laughs> um, you know, like I know that the shift is here. It's coming. It it takes a while. And I understand it's like super complex and it's a lot of fear. I and I, too, experience the fear with it. I'm in no way saying that I don't. But I'm also like very tired of like knowing that people are suffering because they think that they're different. But we're all really having these really awesome experiences, but we're all very quiet about it. If like we would all talk about it, we would be the majority and not the minority, right? Like, so just that's all. It's not all, but it's all for right now, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, Matt, I'll hand it over to you and then Verity after that. Okay, so on the filter topic, okay. It seems like you're a little fuzzy on why exactly like you, your brain gets that like, hey, I don't need to filter. And so you're not quite sure where the trip up is. So let's make a monster to face. OK. Um, and here's the best like mental exercise I've ever heard for that. Is let's just hypothetically say your relationship with death opens up and part of your gifts that open up is starting to pre cog death. OK. That is a situation where like if you put yourself in the shoes of OK, I know in four days this close person in my family. I've seen it, I've known it. This is a developed habit. There's no way out of this. Who do I tell? Who do I not tell? What do I do differently? What do I not do differently? Forcing yourself to kind of live through that and to go, OK, this is a situation where a filter actually probably is needed. Not everyone can handle hearing that. Not everyone needs to go through the the advanced knowledge part. Like some of the people in my life just need to go through this with the surprise that most people experience. And so like chasing through that kind of situation. Right, like once you give yourself permission to tell one other person something so profound. Then all the other filter stuff gets so much easier to navigate because you've kind of figured out where your bounds are a little bit better and stretched them out. Does that make sense? Uh. I, I'm going to touch on what Maria said before. So what my guides, how my guides tell me, like the timing of when to share and how to share and everything, uh, they're actively putting me on this path where I am practicing 
to share when I feel like I need to share and trust that I will have the words to say in that moment and only in that moment. And that's fucking terrifying. I'm not allowed scripting uh, because that relationship of trust and presence is important for whatever is coming. Um, so I'm cultivating that, but it's not a comfortable thing at all because that whole like people asking me um, when something's going to happen or how something's going to happen. And I'm like, I I don't know when any more than you do because my guides are assholes now. And they took that from me because I have to practice this presence and trust in how things unfold. Like everything is, even the fucking computer thing is all about, you know, put, being presented with this frustrating catalyst and then being shown that that frustrating catalyst led to this really cool fucking thing that I would not have done had I not had that frustrating catalyst kind of stuff. So yeah, it sucks, but that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Which is like, it makes it even more like illogical for me to think that I need to stop channeling when I'm in the middle of something like that when it's at SAS because I, my guides say that they'll give me it when I need it uh, at the time that I need it and exactly what is needed to say. So, right, I know it's just that, that practice of doing it and uh, continuing to let go of the filter and let go of that control. Okay, go ahead, Verity. Okay, so this is kind of twofold. Um, one, so the first comment is going backwards because I originally raised my hand for the other one, but the part about um, commenting and telling people and about the death premonition or whatever, um, my sister, who is no longer living on this plane, um, she was amazing. I can't describe her, but she had a lot of gifts. And um, one was just knowledge. Um, and she and she once told me that I was going to pass before her. And I was really excited about that because I didn't want any of my sisters to die and have to deal with it. Well, when she was passing, <laughs> I reminded her of this. And she said, you made a change. You changed something in your tra trajectory. So just because your premonition at that time in that moment, you know, I made that change and therefore I'm still living many, many years later. And yeah, it is kind of, I guess, you know, but it's, um, it doesn't, it's not like you're gonna, it's, it's weird. So, I mean, you know, if you want to, or if your guides are allowing or whatever, it doesn't mean it has to happen. Um, that person can make a change just like I did. Because I truly believe what my sister said was true in that moment at that time. Um, the second thing I wanted to bring out was, and Jen Marie, which is why I'm on camera. And I hate being on camera and SAS, but because I know it's easy, it's better for you for that connection. So here I am. Ha. Huh? Okay. Um, uh, the second thing was when you said about a filter and being careful with your words and and not saying stuff. So the other day, um, I think it was two months ago, um, showing up with Jemory, and you said to me, I need to be careful with my words, but, you know, you just keep showing up, Verity, you just keep showing up. And on reflection of that, I said, oh, yeah, I keep showing up because I'm a dud. I'm mundane. She says, I just keep showing up. Like, I should just give up and and forget it because it's just not going to come out of me. And then I was like, wait a minute, Verity, stop being a shadow girl and listen to what she said when she said I need to be careful with my words because I know that she was afraid that I would take it to that shadow place or take it to that other place. And so when I realized, you know, I pulled my head out of my booty and um and I and I paid attention to that shadow and I realized that wasn't that wasn't what it was. It was other ways. It was like, you know, I'm proud of you. You keep coming even though you're you're having a hard time, but you know, you keep doing it because you feel that it's right. And I do. So um 
being careful with your words is awesome. And if you say it beforehand, that you're like, um, just take this for what it is and don't go all shadowy on me, um, then that is awesome. And that's just so I wanted to put those two things in there. You guys are awesome. Jen Lee, I think, is next. Yes, Maria. Is Jen Lee next? Yes. Huh. All done. Bye. So um, I've been having a lot of dreams lately where my guides are talking to me. Like we're literally sitting down having a conversation with a cup of tea at a table, just having conversation. And I feel like I am completely overwhelmed by this. Like when I wake up, I can't remember it all. And I, I try so hard and I'm just, I can't, why can't I remember? I know what they told me was important and I know I needed to remember it for a certain reason. And now I can't remember anything. And it just, it really, I'm really having a hard time with it. And I've never had that type of interaction with my guides before. It's always been very whispery or gestures in the corner of dreams, that kind of thing. So this has been really different for me. And I am, I am scared that I will take the wrong, I, I will force myself to find the wrong information, if that makes sense. Like I'm trying too hard to come up with it. And so it, I'm afraid that I'm pushing the wrong information. Like I'm pushing from the mundane world information that I already have in here and not letting that, in, not letting what they actually say come through. So I guess my, my question is, how do I feel into that? How do I make this work for me? And then my statement is, why is it so scary? <laughs> You know, why, why is it so scary? And how come it happens all the freaking sudden? I don't, I don't, it was, I thought, I woke up and I'm like, what the hell was that? And so then the next time it happened, I was like, okay, and now I need to all this. And so it's been this kind of rolling snowball that I'm, I'm, at, I'm both, trying to push away and trying to pull back. It's, you know, so I, my, my conditioning is telling me to, and the, my witchy in me is going, no, don't do that. So, so those are kind of my biggest issues. And it's weird that we're talking about this because this was my one thing I wanted to bring up today because <laughs> I didn't know what we were doing. I didn't know what to do anymore. So uh, are you I think, yeah. You okay weigh for weigh-ins? Okay. Yes. Um, Ben, did you want to weigh in or should we go to Ezra's weigh-in first? Um, well, I definitely have a weigh-in for Jenny. Go for that it. You're next. While she was talking, but I also my my weigh-in um for for Jen Marie previously, I didn't get to say. Um, but I'll I'll start with Jen Lee because it just happened. <laughs> um so uh the only thing I can think to say is that there is no one definite truth. And that is why it's so scary because your brain is constantly being like, but there's gotta be a definite truth. But the truth of it is that reality is made up of perception, which is your own truth. But the person standing right next to you is seeing something completely different. And the person standing across the street is seeing com completely different. And it's always gonna be different. Um, they always say that there's like, my truth, your truth, and then the actual thing. But like, I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> I think that like the truth of it is the the combination of all the perceptions. But and that's why it's so scary is because you can only just take in information and rather than making it like this is my absolute truth, you just say, okay, so this is information I know about the world now, and just have it inform your reality rather than become your reality. I think that's the best way to put that. 
Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Cool. But then Gem Marie, <laughs> um, if I remember correctly, you had touched on like, I get nervous about saying something in a certain way because it could be interpreted as racist. And I too, as a white person, struggled with this. Um, uh, so much so that I was having panic attacks and spirals every single day and had to put myself into therapy really quick to uh, discuss with somebody um, because I am assigned male at birth and I have white skin. So that alone is oppressive by its nature. And that is a hard thing to struggle with, especially if you are an empath and the idea of oppressing someone else, like per, like even like at a subconscious level, it feels destructive, right, um, on yourself. But the reality is, is that unless you are actively participating in the oppression of someone else around you, that is not true. It's just how society is built. So rather than like taking backseat and being like, well, I don't oppress anybody. So like, I'm all good. You should be using the privilege that we are gifted by our beautiful white skin, I guess you could say, um, and use it in like bringing the needs and the concerns and the problems of people of color to the forefront and being like, how come that person is getting treated that way? Like, what the hell? And the other part of it is to realize that you're going to get it wrong. That's something I struggle with all the time, is that, like, you are absolutely going to get it wrong, period. And you have to just be okay with being like, you know what? I fucked up, and I really didn't mean to fuck up, and I'm so sorry that I did. But, like, I'm not going to try and be like, ah, ha, ha, like, I, I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Um, Because that's... I mean, it's gaslighting, right? Um, but <laughs> it's also like the exact opposite of the experience that those people experience every single day. You know, like the, uh, those people meaning just like people in minority groups, whether that just be at a racial level or if we dive further into systemic oppressive systems that are rife in America. And even me talking right now, I feel like I'm putting my foot in my mouth, but you know, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Oh, uh, like don't be too hard on yourself because everybody fucks up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's everything. Issa, or or are we? Uh, is it a way in for Jen? I don't. I think I've we lost just, myself. I think we can. I think we can just go in order because. You muted yourself halfway through. A, Issa, a yeah, I'm. St strange things are happening over here. I don't know what's going to happen with my computer. <laughs> Buttons are pressing. I'm not pressing them, but Issa is next. Thank you, and thank you, Ben. Um, this conversation is so difficult. Um, I remember. Well, I've been struggling in accepting the fact that I should be comfortable in feeling uncomfortable because that is challenging me to grow and also to say things in the most positive and loving and kind way as not to make anyone feel poorly or bad about anything, especially in this space. Um, some years back, I remember coming out of the broom closet and saying that I was no longer going to participate in um, in organized religion was about the most difficult thing I had had to do in a long time until just lately when I came out in this group saying that as a Latina, I was feeling very uncomfortable and I didn't realize how hard voicing it out it was on me, on my whole system. I think I shut down. Oh, my autoimmunes kicked in. I went from zero to 100 after that weekend because it was very difficult to say it out loud, especially in a group where um, there's been a lot of loving people, supportive people. 
but just having the courage to say it out loud and also trying to be tactful as not to ever make anyone else feel bad. Um, I think it's, you know, it's taking me a while, but I'm, I'm going to grow from that and challenge myself to also be a better person because if I'm feeling uncomfortable, then I started thinking after that Sunday that maybe just by the fact that I mentioned that I might have made someone also feel uncomfortable. And that was not my, um, I'm sorry, I'm finding it difficult to come up with words right now, but that was not my intention. But I love how in this space, we're always trying to grow to deconstruct ideas that we had. And I'm still struggling even in, in my everyday um, things that I do and where I go in the spaces that I go um, and not feeling that I'm being looked at for any other reason than just because I was there. Um, and so with that being said, I think that we are at least, thank you, Jan Marie, because through this group, I feel like we are in that safe space where we can say this is how I'm being triggered or I'm feeling and all sides from everyone we're being challenged to grow if maybe hasn't hit someone personally but maybe we're getting to hear it from somebody else like oh this is how this makes me feel and not with the intention of calling anyone out but with the intention of saying like oh you know sometimes yeah like Ben said just the fact of that I am white might insult someone it, it, that doesn't happen to me I don't feel that way or just the fact that I'm a Latina and saying something might make someone else feel uncomfortable and I think we were growing past that and I just wanted to say that um I've been absent it, it was really hard on me voicing it out loud but I am grateful that if there was in any space where I had the opportunity of saying it, this was precisely the space where I can grow and not feel um, not feel wrong for saying it. And that whatever, like Ben, whatever you say, John Marie, anybody else, whatever is said, that it is taken, at least this is how I'm seeing it, everything that is being said in this group is taken with with love and and it's been I think we're being very receptive to how we feel um I think I just mumble jumbled all my words because I got nervous but I just wanted to share that part of me today thank you so much Isa thank you Maria thank you everybody Matt, you are next. All right. Um, so for Jen Lee, um, here's my take on it as far as like why it's scary. Um, stuff is opening up and it's new. And it might be that you have a gift of dream work opening up and that continues to develop and then it turns into like more lucid type or meditative and still accessing that kind of information of that may be the path you stay on. It may not. It may totally left turn into something else. You really don't have any idea. And it's scary. It's like, what am I going to get hit with next? And how is it going to be dreams? Is it going to be stuff flying off the shelves like what's 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 next right so yeah it's totally yeah. scary um the practical side of the advice is if someone's called to deck work go buy a couple decks 
right? Practice mm -hmm. with them, play with them. You're getting messages through dream. So my recommendation is dream journaling. Like, and you said you're worried about like over intending um, or mm -hmm. pointing. Yeah. Um, I think just having that journal next to your bed so that when you wake up, you have a dream, you start spewing it out. Now we're starting to blend the physical realm with the energy realm. And that work, in my experience, you know, will help you remember more because um, you're trying to remember. Right. Um, and so if it left turns you into another area, who knows? Um, but at least for working on that remembering piece, I think that's the most straightforward thing just to have one handy and start engaging with it. Unfortunately, it's not like a deck of cards where you can have more control over when you build that into your life, right? Mm -hmm. It decided yeah, some nights good. you're going to wake up to it, some yeah. nights you're not. Yeah, I but, think that way you can prepare perfect. yourself for the times it does. Okay. Ta-da. Ezra, Ezra. So yeah, let's see. I also have had uh, this kind of like fear before and I've had increasingly um, intense dreams and like my um, uh, auditory, um, like clairvoyance or what, what is that called again? <laughs> um, I just woke up, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. That has been like recent. Just yesterday, I woke up from a dream with my guides, right where we were getting to. Like I had realized in the dream that it was a dream, and we were start to we're starting to talk. Like, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be conscious for us this time. I'm gonna get it." And then I heard an alarm. Like it's it was literally the alarm um, that my partner has, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, it woke me up," and it tried to sleep through it, and I couldn't. And then it turned out that uh, the alarm wasn't actually going off. We checked the phone. I w walked out. I walked out the the door. Walked around the house. It I, it wasn't actually going off. It was like in my head. I tried to turn on rain mm -hmm. sounds. And it was and I could hear it through the rain sounds, which has never happened before. So it was like there was something telling me to wake up, and and I ended up writing down what I had seen in the dream at that point. Um, but I was like frustrated. I was like, I felt like I'd been there before and that I was, you know, that I was about to get some information. <laughs> and then I sudden, suddenly wasn't there anymore. Um, and I think part of that is just building um, a relationship over time. And part of the way that's helped me, like Matt said, that writing things down has like every mm -hmm. day. I was like, when I first got into this, I was like, even when you have to journal every day, ugh. <laughs> like every day. And but the more I do it every day, it's like building this trust within myself that I will record these things. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, um, like it doesn't have to be dream journaling specifically. It could just be like stream of consciousness journaling. Um, I recently got this really cool way to write things that is so easy because it makes it like a game for me where you write down 20 words first and then you use those words in a story or essay like in order and you don't repeat them um and it happens like so and so you can kind of sit there and you can have like a theme of it like thoughts and feelings was the first one it was just like write 20 words on thoughts and feelings and then once you get that you write the story um, or essay, uh, or letters. Sometimes people do it like that. Um, mm -hmm. and it just comes so quickly that way. It's like you get the words. So you get the structure of the, um, of what you are feeling, um, about whatever subject, like I did it for the elements. Mm -hmm. I did it for my inner child at some point, you know, like I've been doing it like on everything now because it's so simple to get it out rather than, um, just kind of sit there in front of the, uh, in front of your keyboard and be like, I I had tea today 
um, <laughs> I like before you actually yeah. get to anything, it's like, yeah. and then, so the words are like the vessel that you, that you create mm-hmm. and then you fill it and it gives you this like really neat structure. But, um, anyway, I felt like I needed to share that because I was so excited about that writing tool. But, um, what, in regards to the fear, uh, I was meditating on it one, uh, once and was kind of like, why, what am I doing wrong? Was my question essentially. And I kept on like getting, as I was going through the layers of like what I could be doing wrong. And I started like, you know, peeling them back and I kind of kept getting deeper into uh, what I could be doing wrong um, because I kept on finding something and then kind of dismissing it. And then you know, I'm like, no, I don't think it's that and kind of getting deeper and deeper. And as I got closer to it, I was feeling fear because I was like, oh no, this is it. I'm going to find out what I'm doing wrong and it's going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and then I was like, okay. Like I was like, I took several breaths to calm my nervous system so that I would be ready to hear it. And the answer was that I can't do anything wrong. And like I can, and that I think was scary too, because it's like a completely new way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and the kind of voice in my head, at least that that's kind of saying, oh, you're going to do something wrong. Oh, you're doing something wrong. It's kind of echoes that voice that we grew up with of a parent telling our chi- uh, telling a child us that we we're, we're going to do something wrong right like you're either being oh, yeah. yelled at or hit that, that kind of thing and so that whisper is i don't think i think that is the um like limiting belief that that we have um around it and i think it's almost scarier sometimes to think that you can't do anything wrong that you uh that the even the things that you don't prefer to happen um like what we call mistakes um they're there too and it doesn't actually invalidate you or make you wrong or like sometimes you know they're there to show you what not to do and uh that's a practice in like self-forgiveness too. Like if it's a, you know, bigger mistake or something like that. Um, and so one of the things I was writing down was, um, let's see. So building trust within our, in ourselves is first so that our like trauma reactions, um, don't guide us. And instead like our guides guide us. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And let's see, for me, that's been the writing um, and also a lot of somatic work in how to calm myself. And because that's, I think the fear like frequency that we, that we end up being on like that is very loud because obviously it's like, Hey, you got to survive. You can't make a mistake. You can't, you know, and that once we can get to a quieter place, then we can start to really distinguish what um, what feels right and good to us. Because um, a lot of times we're taught to like completely ignore that. Um, and also something that was coming up with uh, with Issa is like, uh, and actually when when Ben said like, I feel like I'm putting my foot in my mouth, I've got I was, I got this like really cheeky answer in my head, like get used to the taste of foot. (laughs) Like, like basically like get used to the idea that you might look a little silly or say something that other people consider um, incorrect or uh, like a faux pas. (laughs) Um, Am I breaking up? Looks like people are moving really slow. The audio is good. Okay. Am I back? Okay. (laughs) Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. 
but like a yeah, so like a faux pas, like to get used to sitting with discomfort. And, um, and I think too, like, rather than trying to avoid making other people uncomfortable, which I know I do too, and it comes, it comes from a very compassionate place rather than, um, trying to curate all of your actions into something that makes other people feel comfortable, uh, help them and to, and teach them to also sit with that discomfort um and you know you can do that by modeling you don't have to be like in a luxury place when you're doing it but um but yeah just because there is we're going through a huge growth right now like as a society not like at bright and dark definitely but like in general like you you know everyone is like seeing it i think and those like growing pains are uncomfortable and we have to, you know, learn to process it. And, um, some emotions feel too big that that's why we like decided not to feel them. And, and it just like, it feels like something that you wouldn't actually be able to, you know, uh, get through feeling. <laughs> and I think, you know, that's why it's such a, like some things are so big that we really kind of never stop feeling it. <laughs> um, and it's more about help helping your body through the process of feeling those big things. And um, I guess, and that's kind of like why they like the definition of of bravery is feeling the fear but going through it instead it's not not feeling mm -hmm. the fear yeah um yeah i think that's it <laughs> but i hope that was helpful but that's a very you know that is like a a question that is on on the collective mind i think like how do we go forward when it's so scary and what does it look like like, what is it going to look like, you know, yeah. once we do listen? You know, being, growing up different, for lack of a better word, um, spicy, <laughs> jagged edges, um, you know, so many people wanted to smooth all my jagged edges that that's what I was striving for is to be perfectly round. It reminds me of the SpongeBob episode where he, you know, he wants to be perfectly round and shiny and la la la. And when I watched that episode, my kids were laughing and we were having a good time. Suddenly I burst out in tears. I have got tears running down my face and I'm like, what the hell's wrong with me? And all of a sudden it hit me. Well, that's what I've been trying to do my entire fucking life that's not fair <laughs> for SpongeBob, you know, and, and I think that that type of, um, just battering with, you have to do this, you have to do this, you can't be this, you can't be that, that just constant barrage of you're wrongness becomes part of your sadness and becomes part of what you're afraid of you know i don't mind people knowing that i'm a witch i do mind people knowing that i'm not normal <laughs> and that's weird for me because i want i've always wanted to make everybody happy and i don't want anybody to not like me and that's the codependency and the adhd and all the things and, you know, my trauma from being a kid where my dad was perfect and I was the furthest thing from perfect on the planet. You know, my sister was perfect because she learned really quickly that that's what made everybody happy. I did not get that message, nor did I, nor was I very good at figuring it out until I was a lot older. So I spent a lot of time 
as a kid telling people these things like I had this dream or I saw this person or did you know granddad lives in my closet or whatever it was. And it was consistently, you're lying. That's not true. Go real. Stop telling people that, you know, all the things. So I think that works so significantly into my fear as like you were saying, you know, we, we have been conditioned so much to be normal, to be shiny and round and we're not, um, you know, we, we all look like this <laughs> and I think, yeah, that's, that's a big part of my scary in it is I want, I want it to be real, but I don't want it to be real because I don't know how to react to that. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, hello again. Hi. Um, there's so much good conversations. Um, I have written down some things. Um, so the first, I think the first thing is uh, Elizabeth Gilbert. She's a, an author and she did this thing where she like wrote down student like on her hand and I was like really resonated hard with that and what no matter what is going on in my life if I can bring it back to like I'm I'm learning it it helps to sort things out in my brain in a way that is compassionate and I I think that the compassion is very important and like for me like one of the reasons why I participate in SAS mass is because it's it's open for everyone to come and share you know perspectives in a compassionate way and I've never I've never had an experience here where I, I didn't feel someone was presenting information compassionately with care and that's like important that's important for me to be in groups like that because when I might have a question on racism or something um, of that nature where it gets very heated, you know, in other situations like that. I'm able to say something that I'm honestly maybe thinking or feeling and get feedback on it from people that all are also being compassionate. Mm -hmm. And mm, I hope that, you know, the reason like this meeting is open to everyone, like anyone can go on the website and click on the link. So like, you know, I hope that more people like needing a community like this to find us um you know that more which is like find us because i think it's just important to be to have community because you can only do so much on your own like i it can only think about these things so much in my head and feel things in my body before i need to share them with other people and most times when i have shared there's been connection like all the time right there's like all the time like connection and like whether you don't haven't had exactly that same experience there's some sort of of resonance there of connection there and the themes are the same um <clears throat> Jen um Jen Lee like in my experience with guides I would just say don't worry because you're going to get the message again <laughs> like it's not a one and done like <laughs> it, so don't worry because it will be louder the next time you know um it will be louder I think that the way that my lived experience has gone and working through um, things that I perceived were hard with within my family dynamic and life um, and like having gone through therapy, the reason why I feel like drawn to shadow work is because I do think it really helps me to deconstruct like the fear around like what everyone's kind of been talking about and why I choose this chose this connection based path integrated with the shadow work practice because that for me is the only way to sort through like what my human emotions are feeling about like the fear a lot of it is like the social conditioning and so it's like, to me, it's one in the same, you know, like practicing magic and my, my spiritual experiences um, and things like that. 
like when those pokey areas start to come up but when those feelings do start to come up it's like then i have that shadow work to dig into you know so and like i there's so much it like you know when we talk about it's like I don't know, having that duality of like good or bad. And it's like, I can't stand like that because there's just so many different like experiences. There's so many different like choices and so many different options, but often we only give ourselves two, you know, like it's one or or kind of this other thing that I just think is interesting. And I just, I don't know why I said that, but I did. And um, so, okay, said that about the guides. I read something down that I can't read um <laughs> but yeah like j just the I think you know being able to what you know you perceive maybe as making a mistake or something but then being able to to talk about it and get feedback I just think that's kind of when um I don't know whatever you like to call them like aha moments or epiphany moments or those things like start to come through um and I wrote down like um <laughs> oh, something that Matt said, and I'm taking it a bit out of con. I think I'm, I'm taking it out of context, Matt. But you said you you had said the words advanced knowledge, um, and it just like made me think about, <clears throat> just kind of set me on a, a rabbit hole a bit of like thinking about, like when I'm on the TikTok and and the witch talk and all of that, and you know people are so desperately like seeking information and answers and where i am now it's like it's really just about this like this process of like this is how i'm learning information is like talking about things with others and yeah there are people that have more experiences but i'm done with like the gatekeepy like mentality of like you need to get to this you know, place to like have this knowledge or learn this information. I don't believe that that's true anymore. I, I don't believe it at all. I just believe there are certain people that have information. They may say something and you just like feel it in your body that like, oh, like this resonates, like this feels true for me. And then like, just take that breadcrumb and kind of go to the next, you know, and there definitely is fear. And of course there's, there is, um, you do have to be careful because of um what people are conditioned to believe about some of the stuff that we're engaged in you know they think that it's wrong they think we're worshiping the devil or whatever the the fuck people are thinking you know that i i obviously don't agree with them but understand that i do need to be aware of my safety in some situations so i say all of this with just that caveat like you know like that we do need to, to be aware of that but in this setting you know i i feel i feel safe to to kind of share um and and Issa, like just back to, to what you said, you know, just about like, thank you, you know, for sharing and for being vulnerable with us. It means a, like a lot um, that you felt like to share that with us. And I just wanted to thank you very much. Um, and like the the other thing that this kind of all conversation, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going on like 5,000 side quests. So I hope you're, I hope it's okay. You're following along, um, you know, like being in like, where we think about like where can we like where can we share these experiences like how can we sort all this out like everything that everybody mentioned how can we sort all this out and it's like you know what are those things that we kind of look for and it's like when we when we feel like we're not really supported within maybe our family dynamic or our, our communities with it and then some of us have gone to kind of cult-like experiences like desperately like searching for answers you know and so like what's important for me what is represented in this community is a sharing of perspectives and what happens when someone's perspective is different and they share it how do people respond like that's just like a different that's just like an important for me when i'm trying to figure out how do i sort all this shit out and who can i sort it out with like who is safe like who is safe for me to share it with and those are just some things that i look for like when different perspectives are shared how is it received what are the responses and if it's with compassion and it's a conversation that's like that's important to me um and with like knowledge i just think that there's just way more like i believe everyone has giftings um they just man like they just show up in in different ways and part of like if you want to engage with that the journey is just like 
the exciting thing is like figuring that out. Um, but it does not have to look like anything else or anyone else. It is your own. Like this is truly your own path. Um, so to just, you know, I just wanted to offer that, um, that it's okay if it doesn't look like, you know, anyone else's like this experience. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to wrote is, Jen Marie, I hope your grandmother has learned some some stuff like wherever she is. <laughs> and maybe that's going to help on the journey with Ishkatar, that kind of knowledge we get after we leave the human experience. <laughs> so I, I hope that that comes through as well. <laughs> that was all. <laughs> Um, imagine maggie if she wasn't <laughs> kind that was my grandma yeah imagine <laughs> terrifying <laughs> oh and ezra do you still have is your hand just up from before or did you are, no i think i think it was it's just up from before no problem i'm gonna put it down and cat i'm gonna hand it off to karen then thank you and Oops. I have notes, too. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I'll fix um, that. Releasing control versus boundaries. And I am a connoisseur of my own shoe leather. If you know me, you know that a lot of times there is not a filter sometimes. It's not always operational between point A and point B. And I've hurt people in a lot of times and unintentionally. After people get to know me for a minute and they know my heart, they know that I'm a Gen Xer, that, you know, sarcasm is my love language. And, you know, but I, you know, yeah, I a lot of times no filter and say stuff. Plus, you know, being Gen X, when you grow, grew up where, you know, Jokes about other people's ethnicities were common practice based on a tell intelligence. You had these jokes and based on greediness was another. And those were common practice. And I grew up in a time when people used to stand around and try to one up each other. And stuff that we didn't even know being white was, you know, offensive. We're learning now. But presenting myself in a way that when you that. I don't have barriers or walls up that someone, Isa or anyone else that can say, hey, whoa, that's offensive to feels comfortable enough because you know where my heart's at that, you know, I would never, ever, ever want to say anything that hurts anybody. And so that's kind of where I operate off of. But I'm also a do first and apologize later kind of gal. And when I get on, on a rant and a rumble sometimes and get going, every I say stuff out of humor and to make people laugh. And it was like, oh, that went sideways real quick. Ah, yeah, it's me. I'm the problem. You know, it's, it's a journey. None of us perfect. None. I was just telling another cousin this morning, ain't none of us got it figured out. And if somebody tells you they got it figured out, they're fucking liars and get away from them. You know, that's no, fuck that. So um, I'm going to say stupid shit. I'll bet you a thousand dollars that I'll say something stupid before Wednesday. And um, if you love me, you know, you'll correct me on it. Or if you have patience for me and I'll, I want to have the same patience for everybody else. But yeah, um, I think that's where it comes from is the intention. That was somebody else that mentioned getting back to the intentions. So Jen Lee, perspective on guides. I put my guide through a roller coaster. They put me on the ride. They buckle my seatbelt in for me. That's just my perspective. I trust. They've been with me before I jumped in this meat suit, and they're going to be after, with me for the next. That's just my belief structure and how my guides work with me. Nothing gets through. Trust me. I should have been dead long many times over. You know, because of my mouth a couple of times, but that's a whole other story some other time. But at any rate, I have to trust. I, I do trust and believe that the only reason that I am still not pushing up daisies is because they've got my back. 
they'll be unemployed. You know, it's like if without it <laughs> and I frustrate them and they will messages that they, you know, I mean, like two by fours, like, oh, yeah, that's going to leave a mark. Didn't feel that one. Didn't see that one coming. Lessons that because I trust, you know. So that's, yeah. I'm dreaming more lately, too, that I wrote that down. Um, I I don't know, cows for some reason. It might have something to do with I've got a 130-pound dog that now has taken to climbing in my bed since my father's not with us anymore and he's not downstairs. She used to sleep in between. Now he's gone. So now I'm having dreams about being pushed around by cows. I'm, you know, and I don't dream. You guys, you guys that know me know that I don't dream much. And so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what I guess. Ezra, I wish that my voices whispered. You mentioned yours that, you know, the shaming, whispering voices. I was talking about somebody that else this morning that mine don't whisper at me. They call me names sometimes and they're really fucking loud. Stupid fucking bitch. That when I'm not kind to myself and my system, that that's the voices that they, I call them the shadow people that, you know, they guard all my shadows. And they want to keep me into the programming that I was raised with, the shame, being raised with the heavy programming of shame. What will the neighbors think? And how will you make the family look if you be, you know, all of those. And they're, they're programmed with all my shit. They know how to fuck with me. And when other shit's going around, they can feed in other stuff. When it's three o'clock in the morning and I need to talk to somebody you know, that it's like nobody wants to fucking talk to you. Who the fuck are you going to wake up this time of the morning? You know, I mean, they say mean, ignorant shit. The more shadow work I do, the quieter they get. They don't get as loud. They're not as threatening, but they still exist. And that's what it all has come down for me. Journaling. I've had to go through about seven years worth of journaling the last three weeks. Um, it was very vague up until I started di diving in and doing some hardcore shadow work. And now I'm wishing I would have written more a few years ago. But the difference in what I, and I can see the growth just within myself in doing just meditating, jotting things down. And so I highly and I'm not a journaler. Y'all know I don't like making stuff in there, you know. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's say taking over, not sharing, uh, no fear of. Yeah, yeah, that's the older I get, the less I know. I don't know shit. That's good. That comes with the, the Crone manual guide. That's like on the front cover. <laughs> You're old. You, you don't know shit. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. Mystical. I guess it's my turn. Thank you. Um, well, I feel like a lot of my things have already been answered with everybody talking. Sometimes it makes me feel like I'm on the Truman Show. You're all just here for me. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for indulging me. <laughs> um, I just had uh, something I need to process and like I said, I think it was already answered, but I wanted to put it out there to see if anybody else had some advice. And I um, also wanted to say thank you to Isa because that's just something that I feel like we really need to hear that we're making progress and that we're, you know, we're trying. <laughs> so it feels really important to come from a Latina. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so what I need to process is I recently took a job. Um, I'm a I'm a 22 year long body worker, and I'm in a new town. And um, the business was doing pretty well in the summertime, getting uh, to meet new people in the community, and they're all interested in me. And then everybody went to school, so I needed to figure out a different way to make money, and. Uh, the school system here really needs help. Um, so I decided to go in and, and just become a teacher's assistant, see if I could acclimate towards the culture. Um, I've now done like three days of TAing in third and fourth and fifth grade. 
and I don't know how they do it. It is so chaotic. It is so, and like, there's also a part of me where I'm like trying to help out, but I'm also realizing that I'm telling these kids not to do certain things that I've been trying to program myself to, you know, it's like, ah. <laughs> so um, there's a part of me that just really wants to give up. Like I am way too sensitive to be in this situation with like, you know, uh, there's uh, one class in particular where the teacher is just drowning and she she has kids bouncing off the walls and she's constantly recorrecting and trying to redirect them and focus them. And I'm just sitting there going like, this is too fucking much. Um, uh, creating a lot of anxiety for me. And I think a lot of the things that you guys were talking about makes a lot of sense. Like Ezra saying, like, whatever you do, it's not wrong. Um, so I could quit and find something else to do. I could stay. I could go and talk to the principal and be like, I'm over overly sensitive and like, or maybe not overly sensitive, but I am a sensitive person and like this job has been creating a lot of anxiety for me. And maybe that will open her eyes to like, how out of control the classroom really is. And maybe that teacher needs me to bring that to light. Um, I, I don't know, man, but I guess, I guess I'm not necessarily looking for advice because I know like any direction that I take is valuable. But I also, <laughs> If you guys have any advice for somebody who's overly sensitive and needs to make money, <laughs> I'd love to hear <laughs> their concepts because, dude, I do not know how long I can hang on with this. Like, something needs to change. I can't continue doing this. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants to, to tell me what I should do, please tell me what I should do. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Um, and I will put my hand down and I don't even know who's number two now. Uh, who is it? Matt oh. is number two. Matt. Okay. Okay. So, um, I had to definitely change careers because of my stuff opening up, um, just I had to come to terms with the fact that I couldn't do what I used to do because um, the environment was just too overwhelming, too much of like it, greed vibes. Like, um, and my thought for you, like if you look at the different jobs and the different kind of sensory inputs different jobs can have, working in an elementary school is about is like it's gonna push like every social conditioning trigger there is just about in existence like it's gonna push everybody and it's okay to acknowledge that like that's just the way the system um and, and so i think like if you kind of use that lens of like hey how wired in is this job to like, hey, if you're going, hey, I can handle some, like, normal people. I don't mind chatting around the water cooler with Susie and Dave and everything else. That's fine. But maybe not in a structure where everything is about that social conditioning. Um, just as every part of your day job where you're rolling your eyes at the copier, paperwork, you can't, like, whatever it is. It's just going to be eye rolls all day. Um and so I'm not saying leave the job. I, I do think it's going to be super challenging environment um, just because of how much social conditioning structure is just wired into every part of that day to day job. Um, so, yeah. And then, oh, the thing I actually had my hand up real quick. So, Jen, as far as like not filtering, I had a funny story that popped hard. 
part of me opening up was like hearing random strangers as I'm walking through the neighborhood, right? And not knowing when or why. And like, I run the risk of like shout, like, cause what happens is this, like, I hear what they need to hear in that moment. Um, and it doesn't happen very, like it took me a, t a while to realize it doesn't happen very often. So when it does open my mouth, like, here's some stranger in some white picket neighborhood who's going to think I'm strange as fuck. But I learned that, like, those moments that when they do happen, it's okay, like, screw, like, wrecking the social bomb and just yell out what they need to hear. <laughs> you know, when some stranger goes walking by and it, you know what, I've gotten everything from, oh, my God, we need to talk to a clear how the fuck did he know but i'm just gonna keep walking and everything in between um but yeah so even outside the safe circle of sass mass like it's okay to just like <laughs> drop a bomb on a stranger sometimes like if you get the bomb you, you got it for a reason ta-da and i mm -hmm. can't see who's next Petra. Hello, all. Um, so I just said something of kind of what we were talking about last time, but I also can speak to mystical. Um, kind of, you know, uh, I'll I'll speak to that now because it's on my mind, and then I'll I'll just circle back. Um, and you can just keep my eye on the clock because I know we don't have very much time left. Um, so. I, I mean, I think that the most important thing to do is to sit with what you want to do and what your body says and like what you have capacity for. Um, I'm a big fan of Google when it's like, I don't know what to do with things. <laughs> Being like, I'm going to go do research. Are we surprised? Absolutely not. Um, so uh, the other thing that I thought of is that like, you know, modern education really isn't like built for our physiology. Um, so there's lots of educational psychology research that shows that kids that have like physical activity time and like mindfulness based movement practices like before learning do a lot well, like better. I know a lot more about that in terms of kids who have ADHD, but like the amount of kids that have some type of like ADHD or like other forms of like neurodivergence is like it's much higher than like we realize, especially now with just like um the you know the pandemic and this there's lots of social skills legs and so kids are older but they're actually much younger developmentally and so you know you can have someone who's in fourth grade who's nine years old but they're acting more like a seven-year-old so they're really not able to sit in their seats they're really having a struggling time which you would expect from a first or a second grader right they're just like new um and I also think that like <laughs> when I think about like how we were all schooled which was like terror and shame were really good tool good I'm going to be like ubiquitous tools uh, they were everywhere <laughs> not good they were not good but they were everywhere um so you know I think that that's the other piece is that like um maybe that's something that could be supportive is talking to the teacher and being like hey the first five minutes of class can we get them to do like 10 jumping jacks and like sit-ups or like like whatever squats like can we get them to move their bodies around and wiggle it all out like play Simon says whatever and then get them to do some like mindful breathing and orienting to the room and kind of like becoming present because th that can even five to ten minutes of movement can make a huge difference in kids attention spans which makes sense they're like they need to move their bodies of, like at least every hour and so when they don't do that there's so much suppressed energy um, so I just wanted to provide that. And then if that isn't something that you want to do or like, not just my, uh, suggestion, but any, like, if you don't want to be in the school, if you sit with it and you're like, this is too much, you know, um, I feel like asking your guides and also Google about like what it may be available. And like, sometimes those things can work together. In my experience, my guides are like, we will use the internet to teach you things. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like TikTok, whatever, like. Whatever you'll pay attention to, we're gonna we're gonna use that to capture your attention to, mm -hmm. to get this to get this message through. 
So um, I hope that that's helpful and supportive and also just like know that like um, there's no shame in like if you're like this is too much for me right now but maybe later like you know like I think we have to we don't have to but um, it's okay to be like I don't have the capacity built to hold this yet but maybe in, in another time and phase of my life this would be something that would be helpful or that I would yeah. find um rewarding but yeah I, I have also kids are a lot <laughs> They're intense. I love them but also like oh, so tiring. <laughs> um the other piece that I wanted to just mention was kind of circling back to what it's kind of summarizing the theme of you know what we were talking about with everything um and I think that it's really important. Like I'm someone who's who is a big boundaries person. No one's surprised by that. Um, but but um, I think that, you know, in spiritual circles, I see a lot of uh, conversations about boundaries with other people, but not so much boundaries with our guides. And I think that it's really important to be like your guides are like infinite and limitless and they are no longer corporeal beings. They don't know what it's like. Not that they don't know what it's like to be a person. Cause they might've been a person at one point in time um, and be, were a physical being or whatever, but they're not living in your meat suit right now. Like they're not in your body knowing what, you know, you like, I'm hungry. I'm tired. This stressor is happening. Like this is the finite amount of spoons or bandwidth I have right now. And you are always allowed to say no to them. Like, I think this goes in line with what Ezra was saying is like, you can't do anything wrong. Like, I remember having death premonitions and talking to spiritual people about that. I was like, once I woke up in my life, I was like, I immediately, that was like one of the first boundaries I set with my guides. I was like, no more of this shit. I literally have like, in such a dysregulated state that I was having like, like terrifying intrusive thoughts absolutely almost all the time like I would go outside and it would be like this terrible thing has had this is what it was just like my nervous system was so dysregulated I lived in a constant state of terror and I was like I can't handle knowing about who's dying and who's not dying if I can't do anything about it so I'm just like f the shit and I was just like no more of this um uh and that was really helpful for me and I think that the the piece at this circles back to what Jenny Lee was talking about with like thinking you're gonna miss stuff or if you know dreams and whatever one thing I think is is important to have multiple teachers this is like a little segue off of this main point and then I will kind of close this up but um is it's important to have multiple teachers like I think that white supremacy likes to like, because we really love cults in this culture, because white supremacy is a cult. Christianity has a lot of cult, high control religion stuff. Not all Christians have that, but like evangelicalism has a lot of features of cults. <laughs> if you look into like high control religions, you're like, there's one of the, you know, these two things are very similar. Um, <laughs> and the other piece of that is it, I find it's important to, to find out someone who's an expert in each of the things that, are showing up for me and that's why I really love TikTok it's like you know if you go and you're like I'm having a lot of dream stuff I need a dream teacher I need someone who like this is the thing that they this is their shit like I need to find that person you know other be books I think there's a like, last name Moore I don't know if Alan Moore is a name there's a guy who has written books about dream work for 30 fucking years like and his stuff is very interesting I have a bunch of it in my Amazon cart because for me, again, I was like, these dreams are too intense. I need to have some boundaries around this. And I was basically like, unless you can't get this message to me another way, stay the fuck out of my dreams. I'm sleeping. Like my physical body needs rest. I can't do this right now. And you're allowed to do that. If you're like, this is disruptive. It's not actually supportive. I'm not, I'm waking up more panicked. I'm not waking up like feeling like, oh, like I had this wisdom. There's this epiphany or, or it's not a um, supportive experience. It's okay to be like, okay, we tried this. We got to switch gears, guys. Like, um, because this was a thing that I wrote down. I was like, you're building a common language with your spiritual guides, your teams, your, your team, your ancestors, everyone is like, it's like when you, when someone has a baby or you start a new relationship, you're learning the other person and that's the same. It's relational. And so you're allowed to be like, actually, this thing that we're trying, this doesn't work for me right now, or this will work for me, but I need you to like clear it up or I need whatever. Like 
you're more than allowed to make requests about the 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 ways that especially spiritual um beings and and guides and ancestors communicate with you in my experience they are more respectful of boundaries than any physical person <laughs> they're like all right Rock on. <laughs> like they, they're like, we're just trying to like figure this out and get this shit to you the way that you're gonna receive it. Um, and you know, and and I think sometimes I've had experiences where like they they're not like as aware of time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and so sometimes it's like, you know, I've had things where I've had stuff be kind of bombardy where it's like this is too many things for me to process at once and I'm like cool we're gonna have to put a pause on this like I'm like I'm full in terms of like spiritual downloady stuff I need some time to integrate and like digest and metabolize what's happened so I can actually utilize it instead of just having to dissociate from my body because I'm so fucking overwhelmed I don't know if that makes any sense but I was just like these things feel important because it's really what you're what we're all trying to do in in my understanding of it anyway is like build relational safety with these experiences and that means that agency and sovereignty are really important and ultimately like you um we are conditioned out of our sovereignty we're conditioned out of our agency but you are in fact in charge of yourself um and that's not to say like trauma responses don't count or things like that all that stuff does but i think also a lot of that comes into play right like we have people pleasing trauma responses that make us push past our own um capacities to be like well i'm supposed to be learning all this stuff and it's like well it's a fire hose how much water can you get out of it without drowning yourself <laughs> sometimes like sometimes you're just like mm, i need a regulator for that i need to turn down the flow which is what boundaries do um make it like um like processable for our like kind of finite in uh, physical self um and if anyone's interested to you know karen was talking about this and so i just wrote it down that kind of like the societal conditioning in ifs like internal family systems there's a uh, something called legacy burdens which are like the burdens um on your family like on your ancestral line so it's like a psychological way of like understanding that and there's this awesome book by robert falconer who best name ever he's also a really cool dude um but about unattached burdens and guides and so it's a way of understanding from a psychotherapy perspective guides and unattached burdens would they're kind of like for lack of a better terms like i think christianity would probably call them like demons or spirits like mal like malevolent kind of forces or whatever um that can become attached to people because of agreements made when we're like in a really weakened state and we don't know when we're little things like that it's not just saying that that happens to everybody but um it's just i i'm someone who loves the intersection between psychology and spirituality i'm just like oh when the shit like confirms itself it's like hey we're seeing these things together so um, I'm gonna, yeah, I need to, I think that's everything, and I don't know who is next, so I'm gonna give it to Maria, because I can't see. Uh, sure. And we'll I'll get, put all, I'll have... just, like, I'll just jam that stuff in the chat for anyone who wants Thank to. Thank you so much, Petra. We'll get to these last few weigh-ins, so we'll, we can wrap it up with Karen, but the next person is Ezra. Thank you. Hello. Uh, mystical. I yeah. like uh for some reason I, I um for some reason I think it's just because your name is such a good teacher name I kind of felt like you were a teacher um but um what kind of came up for me is in my in my talks with um teachers that I know and um like pre-k like and you know uh what is it like you know the all the, the daycare type of workers and stuff like that um in this new world that we're creating you guys are like the front lines like that is the pos like that's the position you have like along with like nurses <laughs> like that's you guys are going to be seeing 
the results of this trauma that of like COVID and just capitalism in general, but definitely COVID. Um, and you guys are going to be seeing it right up front and you're going to be seeing how loud it is and how, um, how hard it is to process, like, especially like if you are sensitive, if you were in tune with how unfair the school system is for children to be in, what it seems has always seemed to me to be is, you know, they're stuffing a bunch of kids in a room and then telling them to sit down. And that is so unnatural. Like that, like it, I can't imagine, you know, being in a room with like 30 kids and feeling all of their anxiety and they're so like bright and loud and it's like they're feeling it just on their sleeve. Um, and so that is a very, that's a very hard job, you know? Um, I, so like I, you know, Again, you can't do anything wrong. So if you have ended up wanting to leave that job, like no one will blame you. What I like while you have it though, um, I think that, you know, it's not a mistake that you are a body worker who has ended up in this position. And so, like kind of Petra mentioned, like if there is anything that you can do with the kids that helps them get some of that energy out. Um like one of the thing, one of my favorite things, and it's a very structured thing, is this song on YouTube called uh, "Stand Up, Sit Down." And every kid that I've ever interacted with and shown that song loves it so much. And like we play it like three times in a row, and they, you know, and after that they can listen, you know, because it literally is making them sit down on the floor, stand up, turn around, sit down on the floor, stand up, turn around, like over and over again. And there's a couple other like, you know, kind of exercise-y songs. So like, if you can't go outside, um, then I, that's something I would recommend because then it feels like, it feels like a treat and it, fe and it literally helps them get some of those feelings out of their body beforehand. Um, because, you know, as you know, like we kind of neglect our bodies and school teaches kids to do that, you know, by, you know, not letting them go to the bathroom and telling them to sit down and shut up. And, um, and so if you even just introducing, like, I think talking to your boss would be a good idea. Like you were mentioning before, like if there's any accommodations that you can get for yourself, um, like breaks or anything, um, but I think even if you were to leave this job next week, if you could introduce that song to the teacher, that would have been, you know, like something that she can, a tool she can use. And um, in my experience, like kids respond to that and they know that you're doing something for them um, when you're doing that with them. Um, and I sit down in a chair because I'm not, I'm not going to try to get up and off, off the floor every time. But, um, I can't do that. But, yeah. But um, yeah. So like you, I think even if you just kind of touched them in that like little small way um, before you left, uh, that would be, you know, kind of like the reason you got, we got this job in the first place was to bring that there. Um, <laughs> Or something, you know, I'm sure you have a lot of practices too. Um, I'm not sure if you've worked with kids much in like your body work, um, but um, but that kind of stuff um, would be really helpful for them at, going forward. And then, you know, if it does work and you see it work and it kind of calms down a little bit, maybe you can see yourself staying, you know, um, but yeah, that was the thing that came to mind for me is that um, is just, you know, bringing your talents and like seeing why maybe your guides directed you there. Um, you also mentioned in the chat that you don't really talk to your guides. And uh, yeah, I like I'm sure it's, it's different for everyone. But for me, what got things moving was um, was writing things down, like writing every day. Um, and that was part of like a creative practice for me, but 
<laughs> hi, this is Sophie. She's jumped up here to say hi. Oh. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and what it that it's kind of like meditative writing, and when like uh, the faucet, kind of like that Petra was saying as well, we use that analogy a lot of like you know getting into the flow and um, feeling like the it's like you know spiritual water your connection to source that kind of thing and so we talk about it as a faucet and if you haven't listened to yourself for a long time you run the you know you run the faucet and you know there's gunk and there's lots of social conditioning in there and there's things that people said to you that you still remember that you still believe about yourself and there's a bunch of gunk and 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 icky stuff that comes out that um, which is why a lot of people feel uncomfortable meditating at first, because that's what comes out first a lot of the time. Um, but when you are writing every day or doing some kind of meditative practice every day, you um, eventually that water like runs clear and you can uh, hear yourself and your guides a little better. Um, and for me anyway, that has like, opened up like dreams and sinks um and I'm still working on it but you know it's a lifelong thing um but it started just like coming um ever since I actually started paying attention to my system in that way so thank you for sharing that and I hope you you know I hope the job goes better and <laughs> I'm looking forward to an update on that thanks <laughs> I just had a really quick weigh in um, and also like the job thing comes up so much in this space. Like I feel like maybe I could start a group for like a magical practitioner with a mundane job. Now what? Like now what do I do? <laughs> it, and like for myself, <laughs> especially. But um, yeah, so it comes up a lot. I think part of like the journey it's just like this comes up a lot, like within the the spaces that we work, <laughs> and um, I just like uh, some a couple of things that came up, like whatever whatever you decide, if you decide that you want to stay here and try to help, or if you decide to leave, like both are okay. Like I know sometimes just in spaces where you see there's a need for help and we want to help, um, but it's like so what whatever you decide, you know, is is okay. Um, when, when they were saying about, oh, like ask the teacher to like, talk about like doing physical activity and like, sometimes people can get their feathers up and like, we suggest things, but I was like, one way you could suggest it if you, if it resonated with you is to say, oh, like I've been just doing some research and, um, I'd love to try out this physical activity with the kids, um, in the morning. Would that like be okay with the schedule? You know, so that way you're not going in being like, we should be doing blah, blah, blah. And you, you know, should know this, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you would do yeah. that. Um, no, I would. And then, yeah. And then I just so resonate hard when you're like, can somebody please just give me this answer because like I do that all my time to my tarot cards and they've never like just they've given me like info but they don't <laughs> no. ever just be like here's the answer to the question but anyhow one mm. way that you could explore getting information um is through meditation and when I say like meditation if if like doing the traditional type of like sitting quietly works for you that's great but other things you could do is just set an intention and then give yourself the space to just kind of have free flowing thoughts, you know, so set an attention be like, I'd really just like some more information about how to navigate this work experience. And that could be like coloring. It could be music. It could be walking. It could be through journaling, like just a space where like, you know, you're not um, where you've just given yourself some space to just allow like free like thoughts and just to see what what comes up. Um, and however, like through dance or however that like works for you, it's one way you could explore like trying to get some more information. And unfortunately, like we it's like this process that the universe puts us on to like answer our own questions. I don't know why it has to be so hard, but um, yes, I would also like an update and to keep us posted on the situation. And I'm going to pass it over to Karen for the final weigh-in of this SAS mess. 
And I'm going to make it real quick because my butt hurts. So, you know, I'm not going to give you suggestions, but maybe a little bit of permission. I heard you saying you haven't been at this job for very long, just a few days, and it's already triggered off meters and everything else. Um, permission. Um, for me, when my mental health and in jobs where phones are ringing off the hook and Miss Tickle, I gotta go pee. It sounds like a fucking nightmare to me. I was looking for a job when I fucking found this one. It's seasonal. It's not from, I'm not hearing you say it's your heart's passion. And I spent all this money in education for early childhood development. It's it's not mm -hmm. your passion. If it is fucking you up and stressing you out at that point, money is energy. It flows. You will find another means, you know, People pay money to send, put pictures of your feet on the internet. I mean, there's a million and one ways to make money on this planet. If this is not something that, you know, bettering the classroom and the children's experience, they're not your kids. You have permission to, you know, take this job and shove it, get in your car and go treat yourself to an extra large venti something or other, <laughs> and then pick up the one ad. Your new job is finding a job for eight hours a day. You get up and you look at the one ads, pop in the cafe for foundation members not affiliated with the Brighton Note, but pop in the cafe and we'll help you job hunt. Fuck it. You don't have to be any place that you are not wanting to fill your deepest passion. That's all I got. I'll shut up. Y'all have a great day and I'll see ya. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Jean Marie, did you want to wrap it up with anything? You guys are amazing. What we're doing is hard. It is challenging. It's difficult. It's super danger rushy and all of that stuff, but we can't choose wrong as long as we're seeking alignment right we just we can't choose wrong uh that's not to say it's not fucking terrifying to make these choices and to actually like do the things so both of those realities can exist at the same time and will for as long as they need to <laughs> So, love you guys. You're amazing. May your practice be expansive and filled with many blessings, bright and dark. Bye, guys. Steve?